Exercise 2. We begin by going to File, New, select Part, and hit OK. Select the front plane and start a sketch on it. Select the line tool, but to the right of it there's a little arrow. Click on that and you'll find center line as an option. We'll begin by drawing a vertical and horizontal center line off of the origin. The reason for this is that we're going to mirror and we're going to learn how to create a revolved feature as well. The next thing is to go to the standard line or just line by clicking on it once again and a short distance away from the origin in the vertical line draw a, a vertical line approximately about an inch high and then continue a horizontal line off of that by clicking and then drag an angled line nearly touching the bottom or horizontal center line but not quite click drag off a horizontal line about an inch click again, drag it up, click, drag a very short distance, approximately a quarter of an inch, click again, and connect a vertical line to the horizontal center line. And then hit escape on your keyboard. Now we're going to go ahead and add some dimensions, but before we do that, we want to learn how to mirror. The mirror tool is up at the very top. You'll find the option mirror entities. But before we do that, let's just select what we need. First of all, if I just move my pointer in this vicinity, up the upper left hand corner of my geometry, I'm just going to click with the left mouse button, hold down, and drag across until I envelop the actual geometry that I want to mirror. And now I could click on the Mirror Entities tool up at the top. And over on the left here, we could see that all those lines are selected in the Entities to Mirror. And also there's a Mirror About box. If I click on this Mirror About, now I could go ahead and select the horizontal center line. And we get a preview of what's about to happen. Hit the green check mark or on the, with the right mouse button click, or you could click the green check mark on the left. And now we have our mirrored geometry. You'll notice that there's automatic relationships established of symmetric between them. As we click on them, we can actually see them. If yours show up automatically, there is an option. If we click on this little arrow to the right of the SolidWorks text, we'll find View and Sketch Relations. We could turn that on, or we could toggle it off by going back to View and turning off sketch relations. The next step is to add the dimensions. So we go to the Smart Dimension tool. We'll start from the inside out. In other words, we're going to go ahead and add a dimension between the center line and this vertical line here on the inside. Now if we look at this dimension, it's actually giving us what eventually will be a radius uh, as this is going to be revolved into a wheel. But perhaps we might want to see the actual diameter dimension in a drawing. We could actually do this and set ourselves up for creating a drawing later on with the diameter dimension versus this radius because these are the dimensions essentially that you can use when you create a two-dimensional drawing from your 3D model. Here's a little trick. Just move the pointer to the right of the center line or the opposite end and you'll see it automatically creates technically a diameter dimension. Notice it's not dimensioning to anything as of yet. And let's go ahead and put in our 0.75, hit enter, and while the dimensions is, is still selected you'll see options on the left hand side. We have the ability to add tolerances, we have also the ability to add notes and text. One thing that we want is just a symbol here. We could click on in front of this text where it says DIM, which means dimension, that's the dimension we see there, and we're going to go ahead and click on the diameter symbol. And now a diameter symbol appears. 
now we could go ahead and continue on. The next dimension is just going to be this horizontal line. This is just 0.4. The angles are rather easy to get. All you do is you select right in the middle of the angled line and then select one of the other lines nearby that's horizontal or vertical. In this case we'll select a vertical line and drag it down in this window. This is why they call it smart dimensions. As you could see you could get a, a range of different values depending upon where you move the pointer. But we want this little window down below here. So we'll click, type in 18 and hit the green check mark. We could also lay our dimensions out and prepare them basically for the drawing that we will create not today but another another lesson. Let's add the next dimension which is from this point here to the center line. Again we could get that diameter type of dimension. In this case it's going to be 2. However you will not get this if you had a solid line just as a uh, as a side note. It, when it's a center line it can give you this option. It's just, that's the trick to it. Okay, the next thing that I'm going to do is actually, let me just put in the diameter symbol. And we'll continue on. I'm going to dimension from this line to this line here, and that's going to be 0.25. Okay, by clicking on the little dot here, we could flip the hook. If you want, you have control over your dimensions. And then this dimension here is going to be 0.25 as well. Now, as a side note, if you wanted to link dimensions, for example, the thickness perhaps is supposed to remain the same on both of these different thicknesses here. What you could do is you could right click on the dimension and you could find, uh, actually you have to hit escape first on the keyboard, then you could right click on the dimension and find properties. And we're looking for a link. Uh, actually, we will go back to this in just a minute. Let's continue with the dimension. Let's go to Smart Dimension. And then we'll dimension from here, 2 inches. And finally, from this line to the center line. And that will be 5 inches. And we could add our diameter symbol once again. and hit the green check mark. Now we see that the geometry has changed color. It is now black and black indicates that it has all the dimensions and relations necessary to be fully constrained. Next thing we want to do now is we want to go ahead and revolve this. Um, before I do that actually it may not be a bad idea to have a little more real estate on our screen here. Sometimes there's icons, like over here to the left is a toolbar that I don't really need for what I'm doing here. And what you can do is, you'll see the little dots there, just grab that and drag it out. And then you could hit the little X to close that toolbar. If you need to bring it up again, or a different toolbar, you can always right click on any of these icons up here. And you'll get a whole list of different toolbars that you could bring up. Moving back to our exercise here. Now what we want to do is we want to create the revolve feature. The revolve feature has a profile and it has a center line for the axis of revolution. And now we have to go to features. So the tab here on the left we click on is features and we'll find revolve boss base. We just select that and in this blue highlighted box it's looking for the axis of revolution. Make sure that you select the vertical center line in this case. Once it's selected, you'll get a preview of what it's going to look like. Now you have the ability to change the directions, either mid-plane or two different directions. If you want to take out like a slice of it, it doesn't have to be 360 degrees, but in this case, we do want a 360. So just hit the green check mark to apply it. And now we can our zoom to fit. Now just looking at some of these other options, there's a zoom to area that allows us to click and drag a fence around a location to zoom up to. 
there's previous view we could click on that it'll take us back to where we were before there's also section view if we select section view we can see an actual dynamic section view in this case it's taken by the default of the front plane but we can also select the top plane or we could select the right plane you could grab the little handles and dynamically drag through the part you can also grab the corners and rotate it you could edit the color of the section and if you apply it by hitting the green check mark either here on the top left or on the top right you'll get a permanent view of that you have the ability to work in section view mode but there are limitations anything that you're going to try and apply to these edges might have a problem to deactivate it you just click on section view once again now there's view orientation and the view orientation you see your standard views you have top front right back left isometric trimetric and dimetric and to the right of that we also have shaded without edges hidden lines removed which we can still rotate hidden lines visible or wireframe and let's go back to shaded with edges you have the ability to hide and show individual features or parts we're not going to use that right now and some photo works options for creating scenes and view settings but for right now we'll just leave this at that there's also at the very top here a shadow and shade mode option by selecting that it actually casts a shadow depending upon your graphics card that you have in your computer this may not be a good option that it takes a lot of system resources from your graphics card as I rotate it you'll see it disappears which isn't too bad and it reappears but you can cast little shadows and it gives it more of a realistic effect but you can disable that by clicking on it just know that uh, professional grade uh, graphics cards are required to use these functions um, either the NVIDIA Quadro series or the Fire GL series from ATI okay the next part of this is we want to go ahead and add some fillets to it these are secondary features fillets are rounds or radiuses and think of it when you select one of these when you're applying it in the features tab that it's kind of like you're the machinist and you're taking a file out of your tool chest and you're gonna file down an edge so you just have to select the edge that you want to file down or where basically where the file would touch so if we select this edge we could see the preview of the radius or the round that's being put in place we could also double click in here and type in a different value or on the left we could type in the value and if you don't see a preview there's different options there's no preview partial preview or full preview now we could also click on the same edge to deselect it otherwise you could right click in the blue box and there's an option to clear selection or delete individual edges or faces now you saw me select an edge there what if I selected the whole face it grabs all the edges off of the face and fillets everything automatically so we could select several of these but maybe we don't want this one here so let's deselect it by selecting it again and we'll just select this edge right here versus because we do not want a radius on the inside edge we'll flip over here and we'll do the same thing whichever you feel more confident in selecting select faces or edges hit the green check mark when you're ready make sure it's set to point one and now we've added radii or sometimes people call them blends or SOLIDWORKS calls them fillets Okay, and that is exercise two.